I want to ask you a question. Have you ever come across an anime, or any medium for that matter, that has appealed to you in a way that no other has, simply because you were able to relate to it on a more personal level? For me, that show would be Hanebato. Not because of the crazy psychological family mind games that were going on. No, that was a little bit excessive. It was because of the show's surprisingly accurate portrayal of higher level sport and the competitive mindset that stems alongside it that really reminded me of my own personal endeavors with such things. So before I begin to talk about the anime itself, allow me to preface this with a little story about myself. I'm currently 23 years old, and of those 23 years, I had spent the greater part of 15 training and competing in the sport short track speed skating. So yeah, that does mean that I skated around in circles while wearing a skin-tight spandex suit. But let me tell you, I loved the thrill of racing. For most of elementary school, all of high school, and even four of my five years at university while simultaneously getting my electrical engineering degree, I competed at the national level with dreams of, well, one day making it to the Olympics. I know, it's pretty cheesy, right? But I suppose that's every athlete's end goal and ultimate accomplishment. Don't get me wrong, I at one point truly believed that I would get to participate on the world stage. If not for Canada, then at least one of the countries that my parents or grandparents are from. I was certainly capable of holding my own. Maybe not to place on the podium, but there were plenty of other skaters who were at that level and slower time-wise than I was. But why that didn't work out is a story for another day. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I know what it's like to dedicate myself to training 8 hours a day, 7 days a week, just to marginally improve myself so that I can be that fraction of a second faster on the ice. And I know from personal experience the mentality that stems from all the highs and lows an athlete at this level will get. So as I talk about Hanebato from this intimate perspective, in what could very well become a multi-part series, I hope to be able to show how it was more than just a well-animated high school badminton anime, and how it is to me, one of the most real portrayals of high-level competition in any sports anime. Let's start with the first two episodes. In comparison to some of the other sports animes I've watched, such as Haikyuu, Kuroko no Basket, or Ace of Diamond, none of them start with the protagonist at this top tier level as Hanebato does. Right from episode 1, our two main characters are seen battling it out, already at the national level for what I can only assume to be a position to compete on the Junior Olympic team, since the tournament was well translated as the Junior Olympics. From this, we see they're competing at a level much higher than your typical high school tournament, this presents a refreshing perspective of these high school teenagers who are already very competent at badminton, as well as very much capable of competing at the international level. Because of this, no training arcs need to be shown since Ayano and Nagisa are already very skilled. Instead, there exists the grind to improve on what they lack. You see, there's a difference between practicing to learn a new technique or skill versus practicing to marginally improve on a single weak aspect of your game. The distinguishable factor between the two are best exemplified by how fast a character will improve themselves throughout the series. Marginal progress, although very present, isn't so prominently displayed in this anime. It's instead included very subtly throughout the later episodes. Normally, when you're someone who's skilled enough to easily qualify and compete at the national level, there's not much that can be done to significantly improve or change the way that you play your game. By that point, you've already got everything down to muscle memory, and it's almost like a switch turns on in your head, where once you enter the game for real, you just stop thinking about everything else and focus on what you do best. It's like being in a constant state of zone, where your subconscious takes over and your body just acts on its own. Ayano's seed mode, as my friend likes to call it, is an over-exaggerated embodiment of this razor-sharp focus that athletes tend to get when they're competing. But this mentality is something that I'd like to touch on later. What I'm trying to say now is that changing something that you've already trained yourself to know the insides and outs of is not that easy of a task. It's like trying to change the very way that your body works in order to fundamentally improve yourself overall. For badminton, it could be the way that you perform a single type of swing. For me, it was the form that I maintained while racing on the ice. Regardless of what it is though, 
It's this type of endless training involving minimal improvements that leads to this constant back and forth race involving people who are so closely matched up against each other that a single refined technique or strength can give the slight edge that's needed to beat out your opponent. Sarigaya is probably the best example to look at when trying to prove this point since rather than improving her strength, power, or technique further, which were all already pretty good, she decided to start improving her ability to read her opponent and the flow of the game. But we're branching off onto a bit of a tangent here. All I really wanted to highlight from this was that because we get to skip all the training and practice arcs, we instead get to focus more on the character's motivations and intentions. Although there are multiple aspects of motivations captured in Hanebado, there are two that are really the center of focus throughout the entire series, those being Nagisa's and Ayano's. Nagisa's being the much more relatable one since it's a more realistic portrayal as to why she plays badminton. Her drive to be the best at badminton is different from say Hinata's motivation to become the ace or Eijun's goal to make it to nationals. There's more depth to her character as a player of badminton than there is to her character as well, an anime character, and I'll explain why. Nagisa loves what she does. She loves the sport and she loves the competition in a way that I found to be shown uniquely through her frustrations with said sport. The opening scene of Hanebado shows Nagisa facing off against Ayano in the most crushing defeat that she's ever experienced in her life. This is a detrimental experience to anyone that's competing at that level especially when she had just beat her last opponent by a point margin of 28 combined. Getting shut out is one thing, but getting shut out by a person who's younger than you is just as or even more devastating since you assume that as the older player, you are the more experienced. I mean, it's likely that you've had more time to train and compete. When I had raced, knowing there were people faster than me who were younger than me or had been skating for less time than I have always stung a bit. I thought to myself, what are they doing differently that I'm not? Of course, I had learned to cope with it and respect that they were training just as hard or even more than I was. But for someone like Nagisa, who up until that point hadn't experienced a player that's just better than you, it's a bitter pill to swallow. And for them to open up the first two episodes with Nagisa in this slump, with her questioning the very reason for why she plays badminton, it was an amazing way to showcase her love for the sport through this contrasting display of frustration and anxiety. We can pick up from certain flashbacks that before Ayano, Nagisa was the best in her club in both elementary and middle school. It's in situations like this that you can only improve yourself so much through solo training before you need some actual competition to take your game to the next level. When I was skating, there was a period of time where in the club that I trained for, I was the fastest and I would normally be leading the pack and setting the pace so that the others behind me could try to improve themselves. But after a certain point, it's hard to push yourself without having that someone in front of you to chase after, and the only competition that I would get would be through tournaments that happened every other week in provinces across the country. So Nagisa in her own way finds it difficult to improve herself at practice because no one else is at her level. The frustration from her defeat with Ayano stems from knowing that she'd spent all this time dedicating herself to badminton, yet couldn't even score a single point against a superior opponent. She vents this frustration on her clubmates by training them into the ground, when in actuality, she feels that she's the one that needs it the most. Halfway through episode 1, we get a glimpse into just how upset with herself she really is. She lashes out at her upperclassmen and tell them that if they're not there to get better, then they should quit. That statement does bear some truth, but this is still just Nagisa reflecting her own thoughts on others. She thinks that she should be the one to quit since her current state of mind is telling her that no matter how hard she trains, she won't be able to reach Ayano's level. I actually know this feeling all too well. Whenever I lost an important race or didn't get the time that I was looking for, I would vent my anger towards my father who was just trying to make me feel better. It's a combination of internal anger and frustration towards yourself for not being better, for not being the best that you can be, for knowing that you should have pushed yourself that little bit more in practice. And though Nagisa doesn't explicitly say this, it's extremely clear that this is her mentality at the beginning up until her emotional realization on the bridge at the end of episode 1. It's an astonishing amount of character development from a single episode, and the accuracy that they have when portraying this type of mindset blew me away just as much. 
The ability to showcase Nagisa's passion for badminton without having her repeatedly say that I love badminton over and over again is certainly a refreshing take on the genre. And as we enter into episode 2, this passion is even more highlighted when she gets angry at Ayano for being this player who's exceptionally skilled at the sport, yet doesn't have the same passion as she does. She's bugged by the fact that this person who doesn't even want to play badminton anymore could be so much better. Not only is it wasted potential, but it's also a rejection to everything that Nagisa believes in. Ayano and Nagisa are essentially direct contradictions, or opposites to each other. If we quickly shift over to Ayano's motivations, we first see this player who's fed up with her sport. She was the best at what she did, not because she had the same passion as she once used to, but because she just wanted to see her mom. But when you play for a goal that's unattainable because it's completely out of your hands, it's inevitable that the drive and motivation you once had to play the sport you loved would die out. So for Aino to just appear and be this entity that seems to be naturally better than everyone else, but also not to compete, would naturally have a significant impact on Nagisa as a person and a player. It'd be easy to brush off Aino's performance as just talent, but Nagisa as a fellow player knows how much time that Aino has put in to bring herself to the level that she's at. So it just doesn't make sense to her as to why she doesn't make use of the skills that she's worked so hard to gain. Which brings me to what seems to be a recurring theme throughout the series, and that's talent. You see, there comes a point in every athlete's career where someone who's better in every way will just come along and stomp your morale to the ground with their superiority. But you've got to keep in mind that they've trained just as much or even more than you have, and for you to chalk it up as just natural talent pretty much guarantees that you'll never catch up to them. Not only does that mean that you don't have the confidence in yourself to ever reach that level, but that also undermines everything that the other person has practiced so hard for. Natural advantages do exist in sports, but that can only get you so far, and if you are always operating with the mentality that there are these people who are born with the talent and natural advantage to win, then you've already lost. You and Sora look at better players in this light, and they actually expand on it for you in the later episodes. But Aino and Nagisa are on the other end, and have to both deal with people who undermine their efforts by regarding it simply as talent. Nagisa specifically in episode 2, both in the flashback scene where her younger classmates were talking about her as naturally better since she was tall, and then more so when talking with you outside the convenience store. As the coach had said at the end of episode 2, you don't win because you're talented, you win because you work hard. That line really resonated with me, because everyone doesn't see the efforts that you put in behind the scenes. No one knows how much time you spent at the gym, how many hours you spent on the court, or how many laps you ran on the track. All everyone ever sees is the end result. So Nagisa looking up in adoration at someone who acknowledges all the work that she had put in really hit close to home. That whole training scene in particular though was just phenomenal. It shows in a visually pleasing way both Nagisa's and Kentaro's thought processes parallel to each other, as one overthinks their movements and the other pinpoints the faults. It presents an idea of the level of experience that Kentaro has as an Olympic candidate, by showing through a simple rally how he's able to analyze Nagisa's movements and quickly determine her weaknesses. It could very well be my favorite scene from the entire series. But I think that covers everything that I wanted to say about the first two episodes. I did skim over Aino's role, but I believe there are some truths to be found from her over-the-top motivation to play badminton. The show would make too much sense if there wasn't some element classifying it into the domain of anime. Also, I'm not saying that no other sports anime have implemented any of these elements that I just mentioned before. Yuri on Ice actually has a lot of them, and has a very similar beginning. It's just, I find Hanebato's focus on them to be much more apparent. Anyway, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've always wanted to find a sports anime that I could relate my own personal experiences to, but because speed skating is an individual sport that doesn't even have a high school team for, it was hard to find one that I could really speak to like I just did with Hanebato. So I think regardless of whether this video does well or not, I'd still like to go through the next episodes and talk about it some more. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So until next time, ciao!